is going on YouTube? It's Garrett Henderson, your new electrician friend, and hopefully I can be your mentor. Today, I want to talk to you about HCF wiring. What is HCF wiring? Healthcare facilities. It's Article 514 in the NEC. This is a great way for you guys to specialize, okay? I get a lot of you guys emailing me and texting me from overseas and saying, hey, we just can't get that much money in our rates. Electricians are considered handymen. We can't make a lot of money. Well, study your Article 514 for healthcare, especially in developing countries. Those places will pay a premium, and that's how you can elevate yourself away from the individual vanilla ice cream guys. Now, that being said, what is HCF? Hos hospital Healthcare Facility. Now, when you're in a doctor's office or a hospital, any place where you can be physically touched for an examination, okay, where the, the, the practitioner is literally putting his hands on you on a daily basis, you must follow the HCF guideline. And what that is is special wire. Now, in my days, it used to be called hospital grade BX. Now it's just considered HCF cable. And it's two times the price. So if you look at a 12.2 MC versus 12.2 HCF MC, it can be $4 a foot, right? Two to four dollars a foot versus you know, a dollar, a dollar fifty, two dollars a foot for regular MC. So don't forget that. Don't get stuck with that. Now, receptacles. The receptacles also have to be rated for HCF. And how is that done? There's a little green dot, and it's just a much better construction. The contacts are very solid. It's designed to be heavily used in and out, in and out, in and out, and last a lifetime, much longer than a typical receptacle you could see in your home or in another commercial location. Now, here is the problem that I see new guys, and this is what my video is to address. You do not need to use HCF Article 514 techniques everywhere in a doctor's office. You don't need it in a lobby. You don't need it in the waiting room. You don't need it in the cubicles. You don't need it for lighting, okay? You only need it for receptacles in rooms that, like I said, the, the practitioner can put their hands on you. Well, what about the cable you're at? What's the difference between MC cable and HCF cable? Quite a bit. It's structurally much more uh, integral. It has, it has a built-in uh, bonding strap in the armored uh, wrapping. It has an independent grounded neutral. And the reason it's so much money is it's limited production. Okay, they're not making, like how often do you buy HCF, that green hospital grade BX or uh, HCF cable MC? Not that often. So because of that, they make a premium on it. There's a big profit on that type of cable. That's why it's important that you don't use little tails and leftovers for, oh, I'll just use that cable here. It's twice as much. Okay? Save that cable for the next job if you have it. Now, the techniques are the same, the boxes are the same, the anti-short bushings are the same, the connectors, the straps, the CJ6s, everything is the same except the cable and the receptacle. And remember, you do not need to go through and install that unless you're in an office where the patient can physically be touched. Now, you might have an issue with the inspector, so you want to be there with him for this inspection. You want to show him the blueprints and what rooms are designated as healthcare rated rooms. Now, the last step I want to talk to you about is MRI. Hold on one second. Had to take care of something. An MRI, I don't know if you guys have done it. I've done a few of them. They're fantastic. They're very profitable jobs. Now, when you have a job or you're bidding a job that has a scope of work that has an MRI in it, make sure you check with the utility company for an excess facilities charge. What is an excess facilities charge? Well, an MRI 
it takes such an explosive inrush for that magnet to get energized that the minimum requirement in my experience was 200 amps at 480 volt three phase okay and the inrush that comes in the utility company must account for that as continuous duty. It's that strong. A lot of other type of uh, machinery, if you work in like a fabricating shop or you work in a plastics company, they got these big monster machines that also have inrush, but it's never as severe as an MRI. So the utility company will say, hey, okay, Henelect, We'll give you that 200 amps, 480 volt, three phase power, but you're gonna pay us for that because we're gonna account for that. We're gonna, we're gonna write that off our books for as far as capacity on the system, whether it's network or overhead. But we know you're only gonna use that a fraction, a couple times a day, are we gonna see that surge? So because of that, you're going to pay us. You're going to pay for the transformer, the wiring, and it can be very extensive. The utility companies don't work cheap, okay? So you have a crew. You're going to pay for a crew, and you're going to pay for the wire. You're going to pay for the transformers. Just double-check that because you don't want to get into the job and just think, oh, I'm going to put a 200-amp breaker in, and they stop you, and they ask about the derating of the service and how you calculated it. And again, excess facilities charge for MRI and that is my tip for you today and I'm going to show you a picture of one of the receptacles that I took a picture of earlier oh I don't know if I even said it I and those receptacles if you noticed they're upside down okay now upside down is usually the uh, independent electrical contractors way if you talk to a union shop they always mount the receptacles with the ground facing up why if you ask them, they'll say, because when you pull out the plug and you say you have a necklace hanging or your finger touches it, it's safer to have the ground conductor up top as opposed to the hot and the neutral, which could possibly cause a short circuit. Now, my company will only do that in two, time, two locations, HCF, hospital or a healthcare facility, or if the customer explicitly asks for that, which none of them seem to do. So that's the reason why there is no right or wrong. I've, I've not failed for not putting the ground up in the healthcare facility. But if you look at Article 514, it recommends it saying it's the workmanlike way to have that ground facing up. And don't forget the little green dot on it. Now, final advice before I go. If you have a job like this, healthcare, MRI, just go meet with the inspector. Grab your blueprint, whether you got the job or not, and go talk to him. Make an appointment, go to the office there, and just, you know, kind of walk through and say, hey, can I, is it okay if I do this? Is it okay if I do that? Because ultimately, it's the inspector who has the jurisdiction. No matter what he wants, you have to do. I don't care if it says it in the code book as clear as day. He has the right to, to, you know, ask for what he wants. So it's nice to meet with the guy and say, hey, I'm going to be doing an MRI. It's going to be all lead filled inside and there's going to be an excess facilities charge. But my question for you, Mr. Inspector, is, is it okay that I don't run HCF cable for lighting? Is it okay I don't run HCF cable for um, the, the lobby room with the, with the receptacles that have the UBS USB chargers in it, just bounce it off with them because nothing worse than you doing all this work on your previous experience and you fail because you didn't know what that inspector is requiring. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is my second YouTube video. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and liking. I got so much more and I will see you on the next one.